Kommer her. George Michael, thank you very much for uh, letting me be here today. Mm, my pleasure. And I have to say, in the very beginning, you look, you look amazing. Oh, do I? Well, yeah. You've never met me before. Okay? <laughs> but you look so amazing. You kind of got nothing to compare it to. I want to cover your diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, you know, I've, I've, um, <clears throat> you know, of the many things that have happened over the last year, one of them is I dropped quite a lot of weight mm -hmm. that I was, uh, that I was carrying on the last tour and didn't realise I was carrying, and um, that. Obviously, I think that probably I'm looking a little less bloated. <laughs> no, you look Actually, there are there are there are a couple of reasons. One is the is the obvious. There's an obvious reason why I'm eating a lot less, mm -hmm. right? Which I won't go into. It's obvious. Uh, but also on the last tour, I was taking um, protective some steroids to protect my throat, and I think steroids actually you retain weight or water or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was not only eating too much, but I was on these steroids that I think helped my voice to protect my voice. But um, I was carrying, carrying around almost two stone more. And uh, I didn't feel fat, but um, that's quite a lot of weight. Take me to the places that I love best. And yes, I've been back. What has it done to your life to say, you know, yes, you know, I'm George Michael, I'm gay, I'm proud of it. Well, to be honest with you, I can't think of any other um, gay celebrity whose life got harder after they came out. You know, after 14 years or so of, of li living as an out gay man to the public. I mean, I was living as an out gay man in my personal life. And, you know, um, the boyfriends I had, I held hands with them in the street. I, I you actually went did to that? Dinner. Yeah, no, I did that stuff. That. I did that stuff. I never lived differently. Oh. Um, I told my, fa my friends, some of my friends when I was very young, told some of, of my friends when I was in my mid-twenties and didn't tell my parents, they're normally the last to know, mm -hmm. until uh, my partner died in 1993. But the point is, I've lived as a gay man and not really written about the issues other than my personal relationships. I, if I can be really honest about this, and this is not my ego talking, although it's very flattering, the truth about me seems to be that... My sexuality, um, for an awful lot of women, didn't seem to make a difference in terms of their feelings about me after I came out. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, you have to go to the shows to see that. Actually, I, I should uh, ask for my female colleagues, you know, they said, ask him, are you sure you're gay, George Michael? <laughs> Please Believe me, him. I've got friends that still ask me that. <laughs> no, I haven't. Are you sure? No, I haven't. No, I'm very sure. Okay. These days, I'm very sure. There was a day, but these days, I'm very sure. I think... It's caused me a great deal of, um, it's put me in a kind of unique position to be an out gay performer with a very large female um, fan base that stayed. It's made life more difficult for me because it means I'm still, my sex life is still a fascination to the straight public. Mm -hmm. I think it means that, I mean there are things I could tell you that would blow you away that, that haven't actually been publicized but the attempt to invade my private life and my private space have been quite ludicrous some of them and if I were gay and was not attractive to women this would not happen to me mm. you know I'm, I'm, I hate to say it but you know there are there are quite a lot of, of um, gay musicians over the years who've come out and because they didn't have much of a, uh, a female following nobody cares what they do you know, no one cares what they, where they put their penis, basically. And uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen for me. What happened was everyone seemed to care more. Um, and so I've been chased around and my, my, my life has been spied upon and I've tried to live it anyway um, because I believe that I live in probably the most lucky um, generation of gay men ever in terms of having a community, in terms of having fantastic kind of sexual freedom. And I'm not going to pass that up. Living the life you live, mm -hmm. um, you know, with all the focus on you as a person, mm -hmm. how does that affect your life, you know? Terribly. Terribly. I think it's ruined certain aspects of my life. But, you know, the old saying about you can't have everything and it's, you know, um, swings and roundabouts. It's very true. You don't get any massive privilege in life without paying a price for it. It just seems to work that way. I think that's the balance of life. But, you know, when, when you kind of like... It's had catastrophic effects on my personal life. And, and really makes me wonder sometimes whether my life has been as important as the work that I've made in terms of, you know, where I've put my priorities. What is so fantastic in your life that you can actually, you know, live the way you do with all music, the... Music, music. It's it's, if it wasn't music, if I wasn't absolutely driven and if I, if I didn't find it impossible to live without music, then I wouldn't be doing this anymore.
So, so you're actually happy? Um, I'd say I've never. I'd say I haven't been happy with fame since I was 22. Right. So I've wished I was someone else since I was 22. Um, because I do. I hate the effect it has on friendships, on relationships, on your privacy. I hate it. All of it. But I love the fact that. Uh, that I've been given the ability to make music, and and I'm a kind of slave to that. And I think I I try to manoeuvre emotionally through um, the difficulties as best I can. But I am my mother's son in that privacy would be everything to me. Um, I think the way I've been treated as a gay man by the media is absolutely despicable. Mm -hmm. And I, I I think their treatment of me has been a negative. Um, to young gay people, to look at the mm -hmm. fact that you can be so successful and still be reduced to your sexuality. Is, is it possible to, to be George Michael, you know, just like living a normal life like me? I do my best. I really do my best. People would be quite surprised. Okay. You know, and, um, and, <laughs> and now that I don't have a, a driver's license, people would be quite surprised the places they'll see me catching a cab, for instance, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, I try my hardest. It's very, it's very, it, it got, it's got harder and harder. Mm. Um, in a weird way, your fame, the longer it lasts, the stranger it gets. People think it must get easier, but actually it gets stranger. The longer you've, people have been watching you in 2D, the weirder it is when they see you in 3D. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't mean on 3D telly, I mean coming at them in the street. Well, well I have that, you know, sitting right here right now. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, um, that, the thing is, though, uh, yes, so people's respons responses to you get stronger and stranger. But I still try very hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I w don't wish it was different. Um, but yeah, I cope with it fairly well. I, have, I, I, I think I cope with it pretty well. I'm not crazy yet. Here I am. You mean a lot to, you know, hundreds of millions of people, you know, people have made babies to your music. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot. I think yeah. for a gay man, I'm totally responsible for a lot of procreation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. From afar, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Actually, I'm going to tell a little bit story from my personal life because I bought uh, my wife tickets uh, for your show, uh, the first Which show ever on Danish soil on the 25 Live Tour. Okay. And actually, I had to go uh, on work, so, so she had to go with a friend. I couldn't uh, join her. Was uh, it so Copenhagen? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then actually, in the middle of the concert, she called me up and said, something is happening here tonight. This is, I cannot explain what's happening. People here will remember this for their whole life. Well, and the I, kind of, I, I felt that some things I feel the same way about those audiences. And I have to say, this is not bullshit. I don't say this in every interview or anything. No. The most, the best and most puzzled I was, was at how incredible the reaction to me is in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Of the whole, all the places that I hadn't visited for all those years. Honestly, I think there were probably more people outside the hotel mm. in Denmark than, I, than anywhere on the entire tour. And the response of those people, the shows, were phenomenal, which is why I came back and played more. You yeah, know? actually the final, I think. And yeah, yeah, I came back and, and you know, I played that all together. I think I played that stadium, that mini stadium, three mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it was did. just phenomenal. One, two, three, go! It was the best reaction in the world. It was so different to touring the best part of 20 years before, where, yes, I'd given people five or six years of pleasure. Um, such a stud. <laughs> Five or six years of pleasure, and and then coming back 20 years later, it was like people genuinely wanted to show me what an impact that music, 25 years worth of music, had had on mm. them. So, so, so your your that makes sense to me. Your girlfriend is very complimentary, but your girlfriend saying that I think is great. You are going on tour again uh, in August. You actually kick off uh, the Symphonic Tour in Denmark uh, with uh, three shows. Um, it's going to be a very different experience. Why do Symphonica? Um, <clears throat> Well, one, because I do think there is one more kind of be big bells and whistles tour. I thought, you know, years ago, I thought it would probably be the last one, but we'll see, we'll see. All I know is that this is not going to be the last tour. Um, to be at 48 and know that you have the creative freedom and that people will still listen to, to you know, changes in direction mm -hmm. in what you do is an incredible privilege. Um, the fact is I'm extremely excited and extremely nervous about doing a completely different type of show than any one I've done before. There's a lot more work involved in rearranging all these songs and visually I think it will be something, I'm not going to expect people to go there and just watch an orchestra and, and marvel at the, you know, the beauty of my voice and whatever. It's going to be quite a technologically challenging event as well. 
thank you for you know being the way you are both on stage and off stage and thank you. sitting here today and we are looking very much forward uh, to see you on tour in Denmark. Okay, I hope I don't let you down because you didn't let me down last time, that's for sure. Okay, and I hope you didn't feel that I invaded your private life. <laughs> no. <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Right, Michael, for taking you. time for me. Thank Good you. to meet you. Thank you.